Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, <coughs> welcome to Mama Grace Ministry Sunday Worship. Today is May 28th, uh, Pentecost Sunday. I want to welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, we have uh, Dennis joining us. Thank you. And we also have Eric. <laughs> That's Korea. There's a uh, Inyo, and uh, we, have a, we have a guest. Thank you for joining us, and thank you everyone for joining us this morning for worship. Uh, we want to begin with a few announcements. Our church's goal this year is to read the whole Bible, so uh, please join us, and reading plan is available open request. Also, big announcement next Sunday, uh, we're going to have the joint graduation Sunday worship service, not here, but over there at 10.30 a.m. the main century. Uh, we're going to congratulate our high school graduates on their graduation and, and give them a generous amount of scholarship from the church. So uh, that's it for the announcements. And at this time, uh, if you're able, please stand and let us sing. Opening prayers.
Please remain standing for the time of call to action. Coming from different places, one church, one community of faith, bringing different gifts, blessed by one spirit, together we bring our unity of gratitude and praise. Please be seated. Let us sing the spirit of the living God from the Methodist hymnal 393.
checking things before they lock the door, right? It's the vacation season, and if you go away for more than one day, mom and dad, they're busy checking around the house. What are some things mom and dad check before they leave the house? Can you name me one thing? What is something that mom and dad check before they leave the house? Oh, yeah, oh my gosh, I forgot, I have a dog too, but it's not here. Anyway, when, when, they, when mom and dad, they leave, they check uh, to make sure the lights are off, the stove is off, the TV is off, uh, they make sure they unplug the electronics before they leave, and they make sure no water is running in the kitchen or the bathrooms, right? Always before they leave, they got to make sure no water is running, because what happens if you keep the water running? It's a big waste and very expensive when you come back. It's a waterfall. <laughs> Continuing for, for weeks, it's a lot of money, big waste. Speaking of water, actually, speaking of water, uh, sometimes I'm amazed by how much water there is in nature, if you think about it. When I go to the mountain, I see a creek. The water keeps going, and we wonder, where is this water coming from? When I go to a park, I see a river, and the water keeps moving, and I wonder, where does all the water come from? And when I go to the beach, which many of you will this summer, I see the ocean, and I think to myself, wow, if I keep going this way, it's either going to be Europe or Africa. And there's so much water in the ocean, and the waves, they just keep coming and coming, and I wonder, where does all the water come from in nature? In today's Bible reading, Jesus said, when we believe in Him, when we put our trust in Jesus, living water will flow from our hearts like a river. Imagine all the water in nature. When we believe in Jesus, living water will flow from our hearts like an unending river, like a creek. It's going to be like an ocean in the heart. What does it mean? What does it mean for the living water to flow from our hearts? It means God will be with us in our hearts forever. That's what the flowing living water tells us. That God will be with us forever just as this living water will continue flowing in our hearts. God will be with us forever. That's the takeaway. It's the only thing you have to remember. That God will be with us forever. And that's how much God loves us. That's how much God loves us. Isn't that amazing? We went from vacation to river to Jesus to how much God loves us. The Bible tells us today how much God loves us. So this summer, uh, any children here under the age of 95, when you go on a vacation and see a creek, River or ocean, I hope you remember how much God loves you. Just as the water keeps flowing, when we believe in Jesus, the living water will flow from our hearts. And that tells us how much God loves us and cares for us. So hope this vacation season will be a reminder for you of how much God loves you. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you. Um, we see the water in nature. And we are reminded of your words that when we believe in you, living water will flow like the water that we see in creeks, in rivers, in oceans. And Lord, in nature, we are reminded of how much you love us and how you stand, you will be with us forever. We thank you for being with us at all times. When things go well, when things don't go well, Lord, Continue to tell us and remind us that you love us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
living water. So I think I must begin with this. About a month ago, about a month ago, I met a student from India. Okay? And her name was Suda. And I thought that was a cool name. And we were in the same discussion group, and I had to sit next to her. But that was my first time talking to her. So we started talking, and for some reason, I had to <laughs> do something about my curiosity. So I asked her, hey, Suda, what does your name mean? And she said her name meant living water. Cool, right? Her name, Suda, means living water in her native language. And she talked to me about, she, she talked to me about how her name was, was somehow related to, connected to the religion that she had. And I thought, oh, I, I wanted to say, oh, we have living water too. Jesus Christ. <laughs> living water, doesn't it sound biblical? What a name, Suda. It means living water in uh, in the native language for people who, who, who live in India. So living water. And when I heard that her name meant living water, do you know what came to my mind immediately? That too. <laughs> but me <laughs> being someone who stand here uh, on Sunday, I thought, okay, I immediately thought to myself, someday her name will appear in one of my messages. <laughs> because someday I'll be speaking about the living walk, and I'm gonna have to remember sooner. But one thing I didn't know was this, that it would take less than a month for me to talk about her on a Sunday, but it happened. So, Suda, a cool name, her name means living water. And who else is living water for us? Jesus Christ. So at Jacob's well, uh, which is not part of today's passage, at Jacob's well, Jesus met a Samaritan woman who came to draw water. Does anybody remember John chapter 4, the Samaritan woman? So at the well, Jesus met this woman. And she came to draw water. Why did she come to draw water? Because she needed water. But it was more than her physical thirst for this woman. She had her spiritual thirst in her life. She had her own thirst. And what was her thirst? Perhaps her thirst was this, for this woman. It was more than physical thirst, but it was a thirst in her heart. Husband after husband. Things just didn't work out for her. She probably wanted a happy family, an ordinary family like everyone else. But for some reason, it didn't happen in her life. And everyday happiness was not allowed in her life. And husband after husband, failure after failure. Perhaps she just wanted a happy family, but just didn't work out. And that was her thirst. This ordinary, everyday life that was not allowed in her life. And this woman was an outcast who fled from the eyes of the villagers to draw water during the hottest hour of the day. She came at noon to draw water at Jacob's well. Perhaps that was her thirst. That was the thirst of this woman. Something she couldn't have, but many people had. She didn't have, and that was her thirst. And she came to the well every day looking for the living water that would quench her thirst one day. And Jesus met her there to give her the living water, the water that would quench her thirst in life. Not just the physical thirst that comes back, but then Jesus, once for all, gave her the spiritual, the living water to quench her thirst in life. In today's passage, you know what Jesus said? He said with a loud voice, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Let's be honest, we all have our thirst, right? We all have our thirst in life. I'm not talking about the physical thirst, but in deep in our hearts, in our lives, we all have thirst, right? Everybody has a different thirst. And what is your thirst right now? Let's spend about five seconds 
I'm not going to ask Caleb to say anything this time, I promise. I'm not going to pick on Nathan, I promise. But let's, let's, let's ask ourselves this question. Okay, not just the physical thirst, but then we all have this spiritual longing in our hearts. We, have, we all have this thirst. The Samaritan woman, her thirst was perhaps a happy family. A successful marriage didn't happen for her. What is the thirst that you have in your heart right now? Because we need to know our thirst for this message to make more sense. What is your thirst right now? You don't have to say it, but deep in your hearts, what is your longing in this world? What is your thirst in this life right now? What is not working out? What is not happening? What is falling apart in your life? What is your thirst right now? We bring our thirst to Jesus Christ, right? Because He said, everyone who's thirsty, come to me and drink. We bring our thirst to Jesus Christ. We all come to Jesus with our thirst, whatever that thirst is. So we come to Jesus with an expectation. Jesus said, come to Him with thirst. So I go to Him with thirst. And we come to Him with an expectation that our thirst will be quenched. He said to come to Him. So I'm going to bring my thirst to Him so that He can help me feel better, so that He can solve the problems, so that He can finally quench this thirst that nothing seems to be able to quench. We want Jesus to solve, right? We want Jesus to solve our problems, personal problems. We want Jesus to do something about our finances. We want Jesus to help us find jobs. We want Jesus to help, help us get accepted to our dream college, right? We want Jesus to heal our broken relationships. We want Jesus to bring our family together once again. And we want Jesus to heal our physical and emotional illnesses. So we all have this thirst, expectations. So we go to Christ. Christ, I come to you with my own thirst, my own problems, my own issues, my own brokenness. I come to you. We bring our thirst to Jesus. But many times we come home disappointed. We bring our thirst to Jesus. He told us to bring it, so we bring it to Him. Silent, we come home disappointed. Because we are not given the drink that we want. That's the disappointment. Because we go to Christ with a certain expectation of our lives. But then we come home a lot of times disappointed because we are not given the drink that we want to drink. Jesus doesn't give us the drink we want. We come to Jesus expecting an ice cold cup of apple juice. But many times, it feels like Jesus is giving us just a warm cup of milk. Ugh, what is wrong with him, right? Why? Why doesn't Jesus give us a drink we want to drink to help us quench our thirst the way we want? Why doesn't he give us something to quench our thirst right now? Just give it to me. Why doesn't Jesus simply solve the problems when we bring them to Him? Is it because He doesn't love us enough? No. Why doesn't Jesus simply solve the problems when we bring them to Him? That's our thirst, the problems, the issues, so we come to Christ. But why isn't Jesus doing anything about it? What is wrong with Him? Does He not love us? Of course not. He loves us. Jesus loves us. But why? Why is he solving the problems? I can tell you today, it is because Jesus wants to give us something better. That's why. We have our own thirst. And we think, Jesus, as long as you help me with thirst, my life will be ten times better. So we come to Christ. But in Christ is saying, hey, solving your problem right now is actually not going to make your life a whole lot better. But I want to give you something. I want to give you something that deals with the essence, the root of the problem. 
And if I give you this, it's going to be much better for you. Basically, he wants to give us something better. Now, Jesus is a good doctor, right? He's a good doctor. He's not a bad doctor. Jesus is an awesome doctor. And he knows. Jesus knows what kind of wounds we're dealing with. He doesn't want to cover up our deep wounds with a band-aid, right? If I get a deep cut, right? Deep cut, a band-aid wouldn't do anything. Because band-aid does nothing if we continue to bleed on the inside. Jesus does not want to cover up our wounds with just a band-aid. It's not going to work. Jesus is a surgeon who cuts through the depth of the wound to deal with the root of the problem because he's a good doctor. If he just gives us what we want, it would be just putting a band-aid on our deep wounds. But then he wants to go into the depth of the wound to deal with the root. That's what he wants to do because he is a good doctor. Even a small wound, did you know, even a small wound, the healing, healing happens inside to outside. Think about it. The healing happens inside first and then the healing happens toward outside. When you accidentally injure yourself, what happens when you actually when you accidentally cut yourself? The surface of the wound, right, may seal fairly quickly, but that does not mean that the wound is completely healed. Direction of healing for any wound is from inside, the deepest part of the wound, toward outside. The inside of the wound has to heal first for the outside to be healed properly. Why am I saying this? Why am I saying that for any wound, healing never happens outside to inside? It looks like the healing happens outside because the wound is sealed. But actually, the direction of healing is from inside to outside. Inside has to heal first for the outside to heal. Why am I saying this? Because we see God's wisdom in this. Check this out. Because so many times, we think if our problem outside is solved, then our problem inside will also go away, right? That's what we think many times. We think, okay, as long as, my, as long as this problem in my life that's happening outside, as long as this is solved, my inside will also feel better. But actually, that's not how it works. For example, Nathan. Sorry, you're the only one I can pick on today. If you get accepted to your dream college, right? Do you think all of your worries and problems will suddenly melt away? No. No? Good student. Do you think your personal problems, school problems, and relationship problems will go away if you get accepted to your dream college? Again, probably not. However, you may say, ooh, my years of hard work is finally paid off. Yes, you can say that. That I agree with. But that is only temporary. Right? You'll be surprised, Nathan. You're going to get into the college you want to get into. But you're going to be surprised how quickly the joy will resolve. Because for me, when I was accepted to any school, I said, great, I'm accepted. Then a minute later, I was saying, but how am I going to pay for college, <laughs> pay for school? It's so expensive. For me, I was happy for like a minute, but then I started worrying. Uh-oh, it actually happened, so I actually have to make it work. Solving the problem outside does not solve the problem inside, right? Solving the problem outside does not solve the problem inside. It's actually the opposite. Solving the problem inside solves the problem outside. When the problem inside is solved, then the problem outside is also solved, similar to how the body heals the wounds. There is God's wisdom in how our body heals the wounds from the inside to outside. It's not the outside that needs healing. It's actually inside that needs healing. If we heal the outside, 
The inside is not going to get better. But only if we heal the inside, the outside is going to be better. And that's something that Jesus wants to remind us this morning. That is exactly why when we bring our thirst to Him, our problems, our issues, our brokenness, Jesus does not want to solve the problems outside, but that He wants to touch the root of the problem inside so that we can experience genuine healing instead of just covering up the one in the end. That's exactly what Jesus wants to do in our lives. When the problem inside is solved, then the problem outside is also solved. But that does not mean all problems in life will suddenly go away, unfortunately, right? Just because my inside is healed does not mean I don't have to worry about finances the next month. <laughs> the problem stays. But what changes? It means when the problem inside is solved, then the problem outside stays, the problems in life stay. What changes is this? When the inside is solved, then the problems outside stay, but they are no longer problems. When the inside changes, Nothing much changes on the outside. Doesn't change the fact that we have to struggle to live. What changes is when the inside changes, the outside no longer haunts us. The outside no longer becomes problematic in our lives. That's exactly what Jesus wants to do. He can, of course, solve the outside, but then he knows that's temporary. College acceptance joy is temporary, Nathan. Outside healing is temporary. The problem will come again. But when the inside is touched by Jesus Christ, when the inside gets healed, no matter how many problems you have outside, you will not see them as problems anymore. And Jesus knew this. That is why when we bring our thirst to Jesus, He doesn't simply solve the problems outside. Instead, He gives us something better. Something that can solve the problem inside and transform our hearts and desires. What is this? What is it that He gives us? Something that's better than the outside problem solving. He gives us something better that can solve the inside. He gives us something better that can transform our hearts. He gives us something better that can transform our desires. What is this? Living water. Living water. Amen. Amen. And Jesus said, Yes, the living water is the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes, when the Holy Spirit comes to your life, when the Holy Spirit begins to rule your heart and your life, the Holy Spirit transforms our hearts, desires. That we no longer run after what we used to run after. But that we find genuine satisfaction that springs like living water from the inside. And when this living water begins from the inside and flows outside, how we see the outside changes. What we once thought of as problems are no longer problems because the Spirit gives us a new set of eyes, Spirit gives us a new set of desires, and the Spirit gives us a new heart. And we call this transformation. Jesus gives the Holy Spirit to those who believe in Him. The Holy Spirit is a living water that flows within each believer so that the person would no longer thirst from what once made them thirsty in this world. That's the mystery of the Spirit. That's the mystery of Jesus Christ. We go to Christ. Christ, solve this, solve this. I this thirst, 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 please. If this goes away, my life is going to be 10 times better. But Christ says, no, that's not going to make your life better. What you need is not a patch of band-aid on the outside. You need a surgeon who can go deep inside to deal with the root of the problem. And only the living water, only the spirit can do the miracle. That is what Jesus is reminding us this morning. We don't need a healing outside. We need a healing inside. We ask God, God, give us a new set of eyes to see the things, the world, the way you see, not the way we want to see. God, give us a set of, set of new eyes, a set of eyes of the Spirit. Lord, give us. 
In John, in 1 John, John says, Who is it that overcomes the world? John says, Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God will overcome the world by the Holy Spirit who changes the hearts. Jesus, the source of living water, wants us to overcome the water through, not the water, sorry. <laughs> Jesus, the source of living water, wants us to overcome the world through Him. For a long time, for a long time, I want to share something about, about my story. <clears throat> for a long time, my thirst in life, for a long time, um, my thirst in life was a resolution. I don't know if anybody knows this, but then this is deep, my deep secret. Um, it's okay to be recorded, it's public information. Uh, for a long time, my thirst in life was a resolution of my immigration status. Is it shocking? I'm not a citizen, I don't have a green card here. My biggest thirst in life for a long time was a resolution of my immigration status. I came to America 21 years ago, and I lived the past 11 years of my life as something called DACA recipient. I don't know if you're familiar with DACA, but I am a DACA recipient who came to America as a young child but failed to obtain permanent residency. So I'm struggling with it. The story is complex. Before a 10 year old, it is beyond his control. It's beyond my control, unfortunately. I didn't decide, but I, I'm the one who lives with the consequences. It's okay. I cannot go to Korea right now, and I do not know when I will be able to. My whole family couldn't get together. My whole family couldn't get together for more than two decades. And four of my colleagues from school are visiting Korea this summer, and they talk about it all the time, but I can't. Not that, it doesn't even hurt anymore, it's been so long. I'm happy for it. But then I sometimes question, wow, like, it's been such a long time since I got together with my whole family, 21 years. And for a long time, for a person with unresolved immigration status, I wondered, why can't I live like a normal person in America? Why, when will my immigration status be resolved? Will, I, will it ever be resolved? Please give me just one chance. I promise to make the best out of it. Didn't happen just yet. And me, still living as a doctor recipient for 11 years. And for 21 long years, I'm living in this nation with an unresolved immigration status. I'm sure everybody has their story. I have my story. God did not resolve my immigration status, right? And that was my thirst for a long time. I struggled with it. God, if you only saw this, I promise to be good. God did not resolve my immigration status. But actually, God showed me through the hardships how much God loves me. And through the challenges that I've had over the years, I learned that God wants to be, God wants me to be, a man of God. Nothing changed. My problems still with me. But God showed me how much God loves me, how much God cares for me, how much God wills that I become a man of God through these hardships, through these challenges and difficulties. And when I understood the reason for my suffering, when I finally understood why, because God wants me to become a man of God. When I finally understood this, it no longer was a problem for me. And my goal changed. My immigration status does not have to be resolved. I can continue to live here as a doctor recipient. I can wait a little longer for things to change because my thirst is no longer the resolution of my immigration status. My thirst now is to become the person that God is looking for. Amen. 
God even transformed my thirst from immigration status change. Resolution, resolution, resolution two. Now my thirst is to become a person God is looking for in this world. And that's the transformation. Nothing changed on the outside, but everything changed on the inside. When the inside changes, the outside no longer becomes a problem. Amen. And I pray that in our lives, we all have our thirsts, our problems in life. And I didn't, I didn't share this to embarrass myself, although it's a little personal. But then I just wanted to show you um, through words how God changed my thirst. Born again, Holy Spirit. Born again, Holy yeah. Spirit. Yes, yes, thank you, thank you, amen. Amen. So, let us pray. Uh, Lord, um, we thank you uh, for, we thank you for everything in our lives. And we're sorry, we're sorry, Lord, that we want to run our lives the way we want. When, 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 when you want to be our God, a lot of times we reject you. When you want to rule in our lives, we tell you we don't need God in our lives. I'm sorry, Lord. You always want to give us what is best. But we always want what we want. Something that's going to make our lives easier right now. But Lord, you always want to deal with the root of the problem. And that's what Jesus accomplished on the cross. Jesus died on the cross and he rose again on the third day to give us a solution to the problem, the root of the problem that we're all dealing with. And it is our brokenness, our sin that estranged us from the presence of God. Lord, help us Help us to return to Christ. And help us to seek you in our lives once again. Help us not to run the lives the way we want. But Lord, help us to run our lives the way you want. And Lord, we accept the gift that you give us as the best as what we need in our lives. We ask you to change. Not necessarily our outside. It'd be nice. But we ask you to change our inside. Because only when the inside changes, the outside will change. Not that the problems will go away, but when the inside changes, the way we see outside is going to change. Give us a new set of eyes. Give us the transformation of the heart and the desires so that we may live as true followers of Jesus Christ that you're looking for in this world. We pray for your guidance and presence in our lives. And we thank you for our congregation here who gather together to worship you. Lord, help us to become one body of Christ. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And now it's time for the presentation of the offering. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And now let us sing our closing hymn. We have a story to tell to the nations from the Methodist Hymnal 566. <laughs>
Let us pray one last time in conclusion of our worship service today. Lord, uh, we thank you. We thank you once again uh, for your grace. And we thank you for showering us with your grace in ways we see and in ways that we do not see. Lord, we ask your spirit to be present in our hearts. And we ask your spirit to continue to guide us. Lord, guide our footsteps. This coming week, Lord, while we go back to our schools, we go back to our workplaces, we go back to our normal lives. And Lord, help us to remember and feel how much you love us and how much you care for us. We ask your spirit to remind us those things once again in a renewed way. And Lord, most importantly, help us not to see our lives in this world the way we want to see them. But Lord, bless us with your presence so that we may see this world and our lives the way you see. Help our hearts not to go astray. But Lord, help our hearts to be present in your presence. To be firmly held by your caring hands. So bless us this coming week. We love you. We thank you so much. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for being with us always. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you.